Do you wonder what men really think is wifey material? Because men say that they want a wife, but they seem to give their attention to the girls you thought weren't wifey material and so you just end up confused on what it means or what you should even be doing to embody that i'm here to tell you what men actually believe is wifey material and 10 ways you can prove that you are wifey material and have him desperate to make you his wife without you even having to open your mouth let's start with mindset we need to make a clear distinction between the two categories that men will put women in okay obviously we have wifey material and we have non-wifey material for the sake of differentiating the two and not confusing them we'll call one wifey material we'll call the other one the fun girl the fun girl is essentially the yes girl the fun girl is so ready to say yes to any and everything because she wants to be validated by these men talking about men in general and her desperation for this validation is motivating her to try and be as easy going and peaceful as as possible it can be confusing because you're thinking to yourself but i know that the fun girls get attention too yes the fun girls do get attention just like the wifeys get attention but they get very different types of attention okay it's a very important distinction the fun girls are getting attention because they are fun girls right and they're easy going it doesn't require a lot of work or effort to hang out and spend time with a fun girl immature men are also building relationships okay it's not just the mature men so as men mature they realize that being in a relationship with the fun girl is actually not so fun why because the fun girl doesn't know how to set boundaries why because she was so worried about saying yes to everyone and everything she has never built the skill to be able to stand up for herself not just with you but in general with other men as well. And so what happens is as these men mature who have wifed up the fun girl, they quickly realize that how she treats you and how she says yes to you and wasn't able to set boundaries with you because she was so worried about being accepted and liked is the same way she goes about all her other friendships, coworker relationships, everything else in life. He realizes, oh my God, I'm with the girl who can't say no. I have to look out for my girl. I have to be the one to make sure she's not doing the wrong thing because she doesn't know how to set her own boundaries. She doesn't know how to tell people no. She specifically doesn't know how to tell guys no. And so they're constantly overstepping boundaries. And I now realize as a man, as her man, I feel uncomfortable because I'm with a fun girl who every time I look to the left, I look back and my woman is doing something that I feel is inappropriate or makes me feel uncomfortable because she doesn't know how to tell men no or walk away from situations or turn men down. And so quickly, these men who marry or wife the fun girl realize that it's not so fun. It's actually a lot of work and it's a lot of stress. It's about understanding that at a certain point in all men's life, as they mature, they realize there's a particular type of woman they are looking for to marry and turn into a wife and it's a lot easier to do that when you find one a woman who is already existing in that place in her life okay and it's a lot harder to find a fun girl and try and turn her into wifey material so i make that dis this distinction because when we're talking about mindset it's very important that if you understand how you're going to show him and prove to him that you're wifey material you understand what the opposite side is doing or not doing because for the most part the girls who are wifey material remember i said there's two categories the girls who are wifey material will think, act, and approach life a particular way. And the girls who are not wifey material, the fun girls, are going to think, act, and approach life in the complete opposite way. They're like on polar opposites of each other. So your mindset is going to tell a man what you're really about. And when I say mindset, I'm talking about the way you approach life. If your mindset is that of a fun girl or an immature girl or a girl who's not ready to be in a relationship, that will be obvious to the man, whether he can subconsciously understand it and absorb it or not. You have to be honest with yourself about where you're spending your time, what you're doing, what type of environments you're surrounding yourself with, 
and what that communicates to other people to let's just say for the sake of example you're spending a lot of time in the club you go to the club you hang out you're thinking i'm just at the club because it's fun i'm bored i don't have much to do i want to meet some new people right so you're thinking it's very innocent you go to the club though you see the other girls that are at the club and what's your thought in your mind when i say oh you, you're probably just like the girls at the club. The first thing you want to say is, I'm nothing like those girls that hang out at the club. I'm so much different than them. I don't act like them. I don't talk like them. I don't dress like them. I'm nothing like them. But your mindset is a function of your approach to life and your actions, right? Because your actions convey to other people where your mind is at. So if you're at the club, but you're thinking to yourself, hey, I'm ready to be a wife. Hey, I'm ready to take the next step with someone. Hey, I'm ready to build real serious relationships. Well, your mindset is not in line with who you think you are and who you want to be. Let's say me and you went out on a date together. We went to like a real uh, nice uh, place to eat. Let's say we went to Nobu and I'm telling you, right? You're just asking me about my life. Yeah, you know, so I wake up at like mm, probably like 3 p.m. And, um, you know, I kind of just like I eat some cereal and then I go downstairs and I play some video games till the afternoon and evening until I get kind of tired. Then I'll like order, order Uber Eats. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, my God, we're at Nobu. Like, how did he how did he get the money to take me to Nobu? What's his job? What does he do? And and then he's like, and, you know, my mom, she, and my parents were they're super rich. So they just kind of like they give me an allowance so I don't really have to work or do anything. And then, you know, usually at night, you know, I like to go out to the club with my boys and we'll go to like the bar. We'll hang out. You know, like just some fun stuff, really chill, laid back. When I come back, usually my laundry's done because my mom likes to do my laundry. I don't really do my laundry. And I got someone to like, you know, that we, we're rich. So there's like a maid that cleans up my room and cleans up everything. So everything's nice and neat. Yeah, I think like my life's just pretty easy, simple. What would your thought of where I'm at in my life be? What would you think of me? Would you think I was mature enough to be in a relationship with? Or would you think I was too immature to be in a relationship with? When you think about a partner to you and someone that is ready to be a man and a boyfriend and a husband to you, the same way I just described that to you, right? How mindset can show someone where you're at and what you're ready for. And the crazy part about that is even me, whether I tell it to you or whether I show it to you, you still get an understanding of, hey, that person's not ready to be in a relationship or that person's not the person that I'm looking for. You understand what I'm saying? So even if I didn't say that on the date, because chances are, you know, someone who's trying to hide their bad qualities isn't going to say that on the date. Even in the process of learning and growing with me and understanding me, you will eventually come to the realization that I am not ready mentally for a relationship. Number two, confident how you feel and what you think about yourself. If you don't have confidence in the way you outwardly project yourself, right? You don't walk around with confidence. People can't feel the confidence on you. They can't sense it on you. You just look like someone who is super insecure and doesn't believe in themselves, doesn't see the value in themselves. You're subconsciously communicating to that man that you don't actually have value. Let me explain. I am about what I am about. I don't care what the other girls are doing. I don't even care the attention that the other girls are getting from you or men in general. I believe in what I believe in. I'm confident in myself and I'm confident in the value that I bring to the table. I'm not going to change who I am for anyone. That is also confidence. You understand that, right? That is also confidence, understanding that I bring value to the table. I don't need to adjust who I am, how I act, how I approach life to be more like other people. I can actually just be me. That is part of the confidence. And men are attracted to that confidence, whether you're a man or a woman. Now, let me be very clear. Confidence doesn't mean you have to be obnoxious. Confidence doesn't mean you have to dress crazy or stand on a table at the party and twerk and be the center of attention. That's not what confidence is. You also don't have to be the loudest person in the room to be confident. You can have quiet confidence. And trust me, people can sense quiet confidence just as much as they can uh, sense outgoing confidence. Okay, it's all one and the same. This is part of how we evolved to be able to feel things 
even outside of the three-dimensional, to be able to feel how someone carries themselves, how they feel about themselves, absorb that energy and that I call it aura as well, to be able to sense and feel someone's aura and better understand or be attracted to them or maybe be unattracted to them, right? And everything that you feel and think about yourself is what your aura ends up consisting of. So if you don't feel, think or much about yourself or you think that you're not worth much or you think you don't deserve love or you don't think that men should be chasing after you or men should see too much value in you and that you're a desperate person, desperate for a relationship, desperate for someone to love you, well, that's exactly what your aura will consist of. And for those of you who might be a little bit less spiritual or new here, we talk about aura and spirituality and manifestation, all that good stuff, just as much as we talk about the physical because if we don't talk about the spiritual as it relates to relationships then we're neglecting a whole half of relationships okay it's actually more than half number three is standards men actually want to respect you okay news flash to you i know that that might sound crazy men actually want to see you as a whole individual with thoughts, feelings, and perspective different from their own. They want to be able to look at you as a rival who is equal and has smarts and intelligence in ways that they only wish they could have. It's not about you being better than him, per se. It's about you having a different skill set that makes him even better when you guys are together. As it relates to standards, what I mean by that is the men want to respect the fact that you might want to be with them because they're showing you that they're the person that you that that you want to build a relationship with but that doesn't mean that you will sacrifice your standards for them simply because you want so badly to be in a relationship as men grow with you and understand you better in the process of building a relationship or a situation with you whatever you want to call it they will begin to grow their understanding of what your standards are and what you're willing to deal with and how you respond to things. Men might be emotionally stunted, but they are not idiots. Okay. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. Understand who they can and cannot do certain things with and around. As time develops and as they meet different people, they understand that they can kind of act up with certain people that will allow them to act up and with certain people they wouldn't dare try those things if you are someone with very low standards or you just abandon your standards simply because you want so badly for this relationship to work because you want so badly to be in a relationship he will identify that and he will not respect you here's the problem though you as a man we want to respect a girl we view as wifey material, which means if he does not respect you, you cannot be viewed as wifey material. So it's very important that you don't sacrifice your standards because you become all discombobulated watching the girls who are fun girls get attention. And now you're like, oh, but I want some of that attention. I want some of that validation. I'll do anything. I'll lower my standards just like the fun girls. And then maybe I'll get some of the attention too. Sure, you'll get some attention. You'll get very low quality attention. And you'll also attract all the men who are just trying to use you for the time being. And then eventually abandon you and move forward with their life. And then when they mature enough and they're looking for a wife, they will not be looking in your direction. Like let's actually, let's step outside of ourselves. Let's look into the man's eyes. Do you honestly think he's saying to himself, hey, you know, I just want more than anything to be in a long term relationship, have children with and build a life with a woman who I have no respect for. And so if that's the case, then you should know, hey, in order for him to respect me, I'm going to have to have standards. I'm going to have to stand up for myself. I'm going to have to demand respect in turn. Yes, some guys will be put off by that 
the guys who are just simply looking for a fun girl or a good time will be upset or turned off by the fact that you have standards. That's fine. You're not trying to attract those men. This is why I talked about mindset and confidence first, because as you fill those voids in yourself, you will not become beholden to, oh my God, but if, if he doesn't like me, then my life is over. Or if he doesn't like me, then I'm not validated. And your standards will stay your standards regardless of whether someone is into those standards or not. Denial is kind of like standards, but it's a little bit different because it's specifically about your ability to say no to things. You're, you're telling me that he's going to like me more when I say no to him, but wouldn't he get mad? Wouldn't he get upset? Wouldn't he get frustrated? Wouldn't he get bored? Wouldn't he just stop talking to me or stop texting me? No. Your ability to say no to things also reflects your standards. It also affects your confidence in yourself. You want to know why? Because a confident person can say no to things and not be so beholden or controlled by the idea that if I say no to you, you might not like me anymore. And I'm so scared of the possibility that you won't like me anymore, that I'm going to say yes to everything. This is why I talked about the fun girl at the beginning. What that's going to communicate to him is not that you're so peaceful and so awesome and so amazing and so easygoing. It's actually going to communicate to him that you don't have the guts or the spine to tell him, no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not participating in that activity. No, I'm not. Uh, I respect myself too much. I have these standards for myself. I'm not going to be about that or approach life like that. If you're trying to approach me like that, if that's what you think of me, if that's where you're trying to go with this relationship, I'm not for it. No, 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 no. One of three things is going to happen when you tell a man no. First possibility that could happen is you tell a man no and he goes, <gasps> I can't believe you would tell me no. I can't believe you would, you would, you would dare, you would dare say no to me. And he'll be shocked. He'll be flabbergasted. And then he'll go on and he'll pretend to be like, he'll throw a whole hissy fit about being shocked and flabbergasted that you would say no to him. And he'll be so upset. And you just stay there and you stay calm and you just, just chill and relax. And then for some of them, what's going to happen is they're going to be like, uh, well, yeah, she said no, because I was, I was. I was going too far with it. I went overboard with it. She's actually right. And he's going to come back to you and he's going to say, actually, you know, I apologize for what I said. I apologize for what I did. Or I, I, I acknowledge that you said no for a good reason. And I respect that. It's like a toddler throws a fit for a little bit. And then eventually they come back and they're fine. And then what happens is his respect grows for you. The fact that you said no to him. What also could happen is he throws this fit and then he never comes back. That's fine. Okay because you're not looking to attract those men who aren't ready to respect you or allow or are in the mindset that you should be able to say no to things. Okay. Because if he doesn't think you should be able to say no to things and stand up for yourself and demand respect, then he doesn't even, he wasn't even there to see you as a whole individual in the first place. He had no intention of building a real relationship with you because a real relationship is not about you just saying yes to everything and being like a slave, not in a hot way. And number five, we have passions, passions and hobbies actually show men that you have interests outside of them because it stops men from feeling like you're the be all and end all of their life. And that is amazing. <laughs> you never want to give someone the absolute power to feel like they are your entire life and you have nothing going for you outside of them. So while they might feel like a priority to you because they're in a relationship with you, they do not feel like they're the only thing you have going for you in your life. And that's good because it keeps them in their place that they don't ever feel like, oh, I'm going to overstep my boundaries. I'm going to do things I wouldn't regularly do because I know they don't have anything else going for them. I'm the best you can ever do. So if I'm the best you can ever do, why would I try to put my best foot forward in the relationship? It doesn't matter. You're not going to leave me. You're not going to be able to do better than me. You're not going to find anyone better than me. You're almost self-sabotaging yourself. They begin to talk to you like you're the best they, that they're the best you can do. They begin to act like they're the best you can do. They begin to treat you like they're the best you can do because you have nothing going for yourself outside of them. And you might be thinking, 
but what does passions and hobbies really have to do with that? Well, the passions and the hobbies also subconsciously communicate to him, hey, you actually have things going for you that you care about, that you're focused on, that take up your time and attention outside of just him. And that's good. It keeps the man in check. It also communicates to him, hey, she has other things that are competing for her time. If I want to have time with her, I actually have to plan. I actually have to schedule. I actually have to pay attention to the fact that she is busy and has other things and other people and other places to be. So what does that do for you? It increases your value in his eyes because as he has to complete compete with your time. And when I say passions, I mean passions, hobbies, friends, just other things that you have to do and focus your time and energy on when he feels the need to compete or that he has to compete or make sure he's on point because you've got other things going for you, because you've got other things that are important to you, because you've got other things to spend your time and energy on, your perceived value increases. And now number six, we have security. And notice none of these things that I talk about is, hey, cook better, <laughs> be a better chef, be a better maid, clean his clothes better. That's not what it's about. That's not what's going to convince a guy that's your wifey material. Security in yourself is going to show him that you are not desperate for his validation, okay? That you don't need him to like you in order for you to feel good about yourself. This kind of goes in line with passions because as he understands that you're not seeking or desperate for his validation, what actually ends up happening is you flip the script on him because he starts to feel the anxiety of, oh, you don't really care if I validate you or I like you or, or I want you. And then he starts to feel like, but I kind of want you and I want you to see me and I want you to want me. And so the natural act of him chasing after you and chasing after your validation and him trying to prove himself to you, the natural, you know, masculine chasing pursuit type of um, aesthetic and approach ends up happening because you're secure in yourself you're not needing his validation. You, all the men want you. You already know that. And they want you because you're amazing. You already know that. That's not a newsflash to you. So the fact that he wants you, join the line of a thousand other men, okay? Get in line. Now his job is, hey, I'm in a line of a thousand other men. I got to figure out some way to stand out here. I got to figure out some way to show that I'm the best person. And so that's when the pursuit of you starts. And so your, secu your security in yourself is also going to convey and send a message that I'm not here to seek your validation or approval. I don't need it. I already know the value that I bring to the table and I'm confident in that value that I bring to the table. And remember what I said earlier, the men want to respect you as an individual. They want to respect you as a whole human being with your own individual thoughts and perspectives. They want to see you as someone who is capable, not someone who is the scum beneath their feet. And so I say that to say your security in yourself is also going to be sending an outward message to him on whether or not your wifey material, because the girls who are insecure are going to represent fun girls. Remember how I said it's, it's equal and opposite forces. So if a secure girl is going to be embodying wifey material, the fun girls are going to be embodying insecure energy because the fun girls are so scared and so nervous that people won't like them. People won't want to spend time with them, want to be around them, that all they can think about is more and more and more approval. And so every time they find themselves in a new relationship with a new guy, they're so insecure in themselves. They have so little confidence. Their whole MO is how can I get as much approval and validation from this man as I possibly can. And as you begin, remember, we talk about energy. We talk about spirituality all over here. So if you're new to this, this might be news to you. That is energy that you are projecting outwardly as you're insecure and desperate for the validation, those men receive that from you in the way you act, the way you talk, the way you go about life. Trust me, people are receiving that. They then determine, oh, this is one of those insecure girls. She's very insecure. Then their second thought is, hmm, you know, I probably don't really respect her enough to make her my wife, but I definitely could take advantage of her. 
I definitely could use her. I definitely could get what I want from her. Number seven, we have consistency. Your ability to be reliable and responsible as an individual and as a partner is showing him that you are consistent. There are plenty, I'll be the first one to tell you as a man, there are plenty of women who talk a big game. When I say they talk a big game, I mean they are able to tell you all the ways how they're not like any of the other women. They are not going to sleep with people immediately. They're not going to do things like the other girls would do them. They're not easy like the other girls. But then after a while of you putting just a tiny bit of pressure on those women, you realize that they're very similar to every other girl you've ever met. All it took was a little bit of applied pressure. And so consistency in your standards, consistency in your morals and values and not wavering no matter what happens will also show him that you are wifey material because you can't wife a girl who is only a good partner 20% of the time, who only has standards and expectations 20% of the time. You need someone who is consistent in their character and their personality that can be reliable. And I don't mean perfect. I mean reliable and consistent in the way that they approach life and relationships. That will show, this is why I always, oh, I'm gonna get mad. This is why I always tell you guys, Throw away the men who are trying to convince you that they know you're their wife in the span of two days, okay? Get rid of that mind state because think about what I just said. If I'm talking to you about consistency, how can someone possibly know that you're consistent by the second date? How can someone possibly know that you're consistent by meeting you or seeing you for the first time? Impossible. Impossible. Okay? right? Not possible. And so you have to understand that if consistency is playing a role in a guy, you know, knowing and understanding that you're a wifey material, then that also means that the men who are trying to convince you that they knew that they wanted you to be their wife in the first 30 seconds, weren't actually looking for a wife. They were actually looking for an avenue to manipulate you to get what they wanted from you. Pro tip, you're better off not specifying a standard that you have or an expectation that you have if you know that you're going to not abide by that forever. Why do I say that? Because the moment you say you're not going to do something, especially as it relates to like him and you. So let, let's say, for example, the moment you say, hey, I don't sleep with people on the first week, so don't be thinking we're going to sleep together on the first week of knowing each other. And then you go ahead and sleep with him on the first week. That's even worse than if you didn't say anything because that shows him that with the right amount of pressure, right, with the right approach, you will fall flat on your face and go a complete 180 on anything you say. And so in the future, what's going to happen is he's going to lose respect for any time you try to stand up for yourself or set boundaries. Number eight, we have communication. I don't want you to think of communication as, hey, I just speak my mind. What I'm talking about is your ability to communicate your thoughts, feelings, and emotions in a clear, concise manner. Think about the qualities. Really sit down and think to yourself, what are the qualities that would probably make the best life partner? In the span of a relationship, one of the most important things is your ability to resolve conflict. Conflict resolution is like a majority of all romantic relationships because it's two individuals who are going to spend the rest of your lives together, who have two different perspectives, who grew up two, in two different childhoods and two different houses with, with different parents and a different understanding of life. You're going to disagree. You're going to not see eye to eye every, every time. Not everything's going to be roses and dandelions. Dandelions are actually weeds. So not everything is going to be rainbows and sunshines. He is, as a man, I'll tell you, I'll tell you from a man's perspective, our natural instinct is to try and solve problems to help our women. So I say that because if you're able to clearly and concisely communicate your thoughts and feelings, then it makes it easier for him as a man to solve your problems or at least help you solve your problems. And so the women who are best at communicating their thoughts, feelings, or, and emotions are the best and most valuable wifey 
candidates. That is an amazing quality to show him that you're actually a life partner not just a person and i know for some of you might be like do guys even pay attention to that do guys even care about trust me whether or not he's smart or too stupid to explain it and explain why it matters he can feel it because the same way he probably knows when someone can uh, explain their thoughts and feelings and emotions in a clear, concise manner is the same way he's probably been frustrated dealing with a woman who cannot explain her thoughts, feelings and emotions in a clear, concise manner. It's very I'm telling you as a man, it is I'm going to get mad. It's very frustrating to deal with that. Let's say um, you go out to a party, an event together. And while you're at this event together, um, he's kind of talking in, in the group of people. And let's say he doesn't really introduce you. And then he's kind of talking to his friends and he's having a conversation and you're just kind of standing there awkwardly and you don't really know what to say. And then you kind of just like uh, walk away and you just pretend to go to the bathroom because it's been like 20 minutes and he hasn't introduced you. And now you're just kind of standing there and it feels really awkward for you. Something small, right? It bothers you. But he might not even realize it bothers you. He's having a good time. He says he's talking to his friends and all this good stuff. You guys are in the car ride back home. And then he's asking you, he, he's like, what, what's wrong? Is something bothering you? Because you're kind of quiet. You're kind of not being yourself. And so he can feel that energy shift. He's like, are you okay? What's, what's wrong? What's bothering you? And let's say a lack of an ability to communicate properly would be you sitting there and say, what's your problem? Like what you don't even, you don't even know what you did or. Like, you know what you did, you know what you did. Like, I can't believe you. You're just, you're such a, you're such a poop head. I just, I can't even talk to you right now. And he's like, wait, wait, what? I don't wait. What's I'm, I'm confused. What, what, what are you, what's the problem? And you're like, I, you just, every time you just, you just mistreat me and you never treat me how I'm supposed to be treated and, and you don't even care about me and you did it and you're like breaking down. He's like, wait, but what, what is the problem? I don't understand what's, what's the issue. And you're, and you're just like, you're just fumbling around, right? And you're like crying. You're going crazy. You're just like, I don't understand how you don't get it. You don't understand me. It doesn't make any sense to me how you can treat me. And then he's like scrambling in his mind. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I did wrong. I'm, con I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Right. And then there's just this vicious cycle of I'm confused. You're confused. We're both confused. Why are you mad? I don't know why you're mad. I can't solve your problem. I don't know why you're mad. Nobody n understands anything. And there's a whole bunch of confusion. OK, and remember how I said men naturally want to solve your problems as a man. He can't solve your problems when you can't communicate or articulate your feelings in a clear, concise manner. And so I say that to say in the process of learning and understanding you as he begins to sense, oh, no, I I can even if I'm emotionally stunted, you're so clear in your in your communication of your feelings and your um on, and, and your thoughts that I can actually absorb that and I can help you solve your problems. Okay. And as a man, if you've ever been with a woman who is also kind of emotionally stunted where she can't communicate her feelings, you know how much better it is being with someone who can, because you can actually come to understandings and solve problems. When you're with someone who can't communicate as a man, it becomes very frustrating because you're constantly having fights and you don't know how to resolve those fights because you're not really sure what the root of the problem or the issue is. Think about this. Part of the reason that you're here and you're talking to me and you're talking to me, you're listening to me, right? And you enjoy hearing what I have to say from a, from a man's perspective is because of my ability to articulate the thoughts and the feelings of a man, because that helps you put pieces together and problem solve in your relationships and your dating life that you can understand how to adjust or change behavior or actions to see the result that you desire to see. Okay. So I say that to say that's how valuable that skill set is. And that's one of the things you can actually show a man that he'll be like, whoa, you're like this. You are prepared for a relationship. You are not like the other women because the other women, remember why I said equal and opposite forces, the other women, the yes girls are not very good at communicating their feelings for a couple of reasons. And it's actually mainly because they don't want to even communicate their feelings. They're so busy trying to be liked and trying to be validated by the guys that like them 
even if they do have a problem with something, they're not going to communicate that to you. Or they'll have this glitch error code because they want to say that something bothers them, but they're too scared to say that something bothers them because they don't want to not be liked anymore. And they don't want to be seen as a problem and they don't want to be seen as, 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 um, you know, hard to get along with. And because they're still so desperate for the validation, they're having like this internal battle with themselves of how do I communicate this, but still be liked and still be validated and still feel and still be like a good yes girl and still right. And because they're having this battle with themselves, their words and their and their thoughts don't come out in a clear, concise manner. Instead, they come up in this jumbled up mess where the person trying to communicate their feelings is also frustrated that they're even upset in the first place. And they're trying so badly to not be frustrated. It's frustrating them more. And because they're more frustrated because they're frustrated, right? Their words come out even less clear. And everything just ends up in confusion. Number nine, we have boundaries. Okay, we're going to get deep here. Yeah. You need to have boundaries in order for you to be considered wifey material. I'm just going to come tell it to you straight up. If you don't have boundaries, men will have the clear understanding and indication that they can walk all over you anytime that they want to any way that they want to. Your boundaries communicate your standards. They communicate your expectations. And if you allow people to cross those without consequences, they will see that they are no consequences for anything. And they will begin to treat you and treat the relationship as if there are no consequences. If there was no risk of jail time for stealing and doing bad things, trust me, a lot of people would steal and do a lot more bad things if there were no consequences. The same way in a relationship, if there are no boundaries in the relationship and you're not willing to stand by those boundaries and have people face consequences for the, for them crossing those boundaries, they will do whatever they want, however they want, whenever they want. The girl that they actually make their wife, they want to have respect for. If you allow him to walk all over you and you allow him to cross your boundaries and you don't or you don't even set boundaries in the first place, he will stop respecting you if he ever started respecting you at all. Once he loses respect for you, you stop being a wifey and you turn into a fun girl that he can just use and take advantage of. Think about it. Do you think that men wake up in the morning and say, I want a wife, the girl who will allow me to walk all over her. I want to make the mother of my children. I want to spend the rest of my life with the women that the woman that will allow me to do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, walk all over her, cross every single one of her boundaries and never say anything about it. Think, think about, think about that logic. Really? No man would ever say that that that's what he wants in a wife, that he wants the ability to walk all over you and cross any one of your boundaries and face no, con it doesn't make sense because if he wanted that, he wouldn't be in a relationship with that woman. Why would, why would he commit himself to someone that he doesn't respect? Why would he commit himself to someone who doesn't have boundaries? He would just use that person. Are you following me? So it's not about, oh, I wouldn't give my attention to that person. He would, but he would use that person. Let's say, let's say that's how life was. You could just go into any store, walk out with anything you wanted. No one would chase you. No one would say anything to you. No one would yell at you. You wouldn't get a message. You wouldn't go to jail. You would nothing. So why would you not? Why would you put in the effort of paying for the thing when you can just walk out of it scot-free and nobody says it, not even the cashier, not even the owner. Think of it like that. It's the same thing with boundaries. If there are no boundaries, why would I treat you right? Why would I respect you? Why would I wife you? There's no reason to. I don't need to. Why would I make the girl my wife who has no boundaries? She has no boundaries. So I could treat her like trash, get what I want from her anytime I want it from her and go about my day. Doesn't require commitment doesn't require any effort, doesn't require respect. And number 10, your ability to walk away. If you cannot walk away from that man, he will not see you as wifey material. He won't have no respect for you. He won't need or want anything from you except your squatal. I'm not saying at the first sign of trouble, you need to block people. Okay. You don't have to take it in any one extreme, but there needs to be an understanding that if someone crosses too many boundaries, if someone is not treating you well, if someone is showing you that they're not prepared to be the man that you expect them to be, you are 
more than willing to walk away. I want you to imagine it like this analogy. Let's say you're running a department store and in your department store, uh, let's say there's two versions of this department store. In one version, this person comes in and is talking to you about how they're considering buying one of your shirts, but you literally have had no customers in the entire day. What's going to happen is when that one customer comes, because you've had no customers and you're really hoping to get the sale, you're going to sit there and you're going to say, hey, um, oh, sure. What are you, what are you looking for? What do you need? What size is? You're going to help them try stuff on. And even if they don't end up buying anything, right? You're not going to see it as a loss because you're going to have wanted to figure out, hey, I'll spend as much time with you as I possibly need to figure out if I can get the sale or not, right? You're going to put a lot more effort in that. Hi, um, vice versa, if you are in a situation where you're running that same department store and you've got a thousand people in the line, you've got people all over the store ready to buy. It's like pandemonium. And that same person comes to the cash register and says, hey, I'm thinking about buying this. You, you don't even have time to hear that. Why? Because you have so much more going on and there's so many other people who are willing to buy. You don't have time to be focused on people who aren't ready to buy or purchase. Okay. So, and I say that to say the analogy is meant to represent if you know that you have value, you're confident in your value, you have standards, you know that men want to be, want to be with you, near you, close to you, inside you, all that good stuff. They're begging. They're begging, crawling on their knees, crawling on glass, sniffing your farts, sniffing your chairs. You are not going to concern yourself with spending any time or energy on people who are showing you that they're not prepared to be with you in the capacity that you expect. That's why I say you have to take care of these other things as it relates to your confidence, filling up your own holes, doing all the things that are important to you, validating yourself that you are more than prepared to walk away from any situation or any man who is not showing himself to be who you need him to be. And like I said earlier, the men want to respect you. They will feel that you, you don't even necessarily have to walk away all the time. They can feel that from the jump that you're someone they shouldn't be messing with. I told you guys are emotionally stunted, but they're not idiots. They know who they can pull certain things on and who they can't. And after a while of getting to know you, they realize what they can get away with and what they can't. And your ability to walk away will communicate to him, mm, yeah, I shouldn't try that with her. Mm, no, she'll she'll gladly leave the relationship um, if I act up or act crazy. That's why these men are in relationships and they say, yeah, guys, I'm not going to do that. My wife, she wouldn't approve of that. Uh, yeah, no, my, my, my wife would, 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 would hurt me if I did that. I'm not, guys, I'm not doing that. You must be crazy if you think I'm going to do that. Right? Because there's an understanding that my wife has standards. My wife has expectations. Uh, I must abide by those standards and expectations, even if I don't like them, even if they're not super fun all the time. I got to live by those. I, I can't I can't undo those. I can't overstep those boundaries. Those are boundaries. When it comes to their wife, they want to be in a position like that. And when you approach a relationship like that, you're sending those signals out to him that, hey, you're a different type of girl. You're the wifey material type of girl. You're not the fun girl that I can take advantage of. So you might get a different type of attention, but trust you me, you will still get attention and you'll get attention from the men who are ready to make you their wife. That's all you want anyways. I think for most of you, I don't think any of you really want to be someone's fun girl. 